YouTube, what's going on? Air of Carthage here, and I am back in Total War Warhammer 2. I do hope you all are having a good weekend. I am actually on a short vacation as you're watching this. I didn't think I would end up getting another video recorded, but I did. I do have some travel for work next week as well, but I will have time to get some stuff recorded for you on Monday, and you shouldn't really notice a whole lot of difference on your end. But anyway, hey, let's jump into another 2v2. This one is going to be uh, kind of strange alliances. Both the Lizards and the Wood Elves have picked an undead partner, and then they're going to be facing off against each other. As for the Vampires and the Wood Elf team, let's check out what they've got. They're going to be starting off with a, va or a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord on a Zombie Dragon, so it's going to be a pretty powerful character. we got a Terra Geist, a couple of Fell Bats supporting, and then on the ground... Some Blood Knights, just skeletons for infantry, uh, supported by zombies, because, I mean, at that point, that's all you can really afford. However, they've got a White King on a Undead Steed, and then a Corpse Cart, or Skeletal ski Steed, I should say, and then a Corpse Cart with an Unholy Lodestone. This heals the units around it, and then also imbues more melee attack. Now, let's look at their enemy straight across from them. It's going to be uh, Hexodal here, led by Krokgar. And we're going to have four Skink Skirmishers up front. Then there's a line of Skink Cohorts behind those, as well as Red Crested Skinks. They are supported by a Salamander Hunting Pack, an Ancient Salamander, and some Cold One Spear Riders, and Feral Cold Ones. And here is Krokgar. Um, so we got Krokgar in the middle of that one. And then as for the Tomb Kings, we're going to end up with four Spearmen along the front, three Skeletal Archers, and then we're going to have some Tomb Guard and Tomb Guard with Halberds in the back for a little bit tougher infantry line. And then as for the Wood Elves, they are led by Durthu and a Branch Wraith. And then as far as their infantry makeup, they've got a few units of War Dancers. And then they're going to have several units, uh, or a couple units of Eternal Guard, and then one unit of Wildwood Rangers. And they are supported by a couple of Glade Riders, the Hagbane Tip. And as for the rest of the Tomb King army, it is actually Setra the Imperishable on his Chariot of the Gods. I believe... Or actually, no, this is not the Chariot of the Gods. I'm pretty sure this is just a more standard chariot. I could be wrong. I think the other one kind of hovers in the air. Um, and then we've got a Lich Priest, Lore of Light, and the Eyes of the Desert Sepulchral Stalkers in the background. So let's check out what we get here as we hit play. There's going to be an initial fight between Setra, his carrion, and some of the Glade Riders. And Setra's Lich Priest uses a net of Amontok to pin down these Glade Riders. The other Glade Rider is able to flee back to support from its infantry, and as the Carrion come in to interfere, they're going to be tagged by Wildwood Rangers, and that fight won't last long. Uh, Glade Riders are actually decently competent in melee, and it really shouldn't be totally underestimated. The swing to the other side of the fight, where the Skinks are joining combat against the Skeleton Warriors and the Zombies, and they will do okay for the most part, but the White King will make that a tough fight for them. You see the fell bats being used to intercept the skink skirmishers. And over here, Krokgar takes a full-on engagement against two blood knights, a white king, and a blood dragon lord on a zombie or a zombie dragon, and then not far away is a terror geist. So this is a really dicey fight for the lizard men to take, and they really shouldn't. Uh, if you get into this type of fight with the vampires, they will outlast you, and they will cause you tremendous damage. I love the support from the salamanders. Um, it's good support, and it's going to cause some damage, but this fight is just going to be way too overwhelming, even for Krokgar. And as we swing back to the other side, you can see the skeletal archers here from the Tomb Kings <laughs> actually being the ones making the impact. You would think that you would see the archers from the Wood Elves, but honestly, Tomb Kings are a freaking nightmare to skirmish with, especially for the Wood Elves these days, because of Casket of Souls being so ridiculously good. You can just get some cheap infantry, surround two or three caskets of souls, and it doesn't matter what archers the Wood Elves bring, they're going to get wrecked. So it's kind of odd, but I at least that's the way I see it in my eyes. I could be wrong, but I feel like that um, the Wood Elves would be at a skirmish disadvantage to the Tomb Kings in many situations, and you can see that that's actually the case now. However, the infantry, the War Dancers and Durthu, are making pretty short work of most of the infantry here, though Setra is combining on the flank with his Lich Priest and Sepulchral Stalkers and kind of cleaning up units one by one. If we swing back to the other side of the battlefield, you'll be able to see that uh, the the uh, Lizards paid a massive price for engaging that Vampire Lord. 
you're gonna see Krokgar come back for more, but you have to deal so much damage to the vampires because of the, how much they can heal. And the corpse card is gone, that's big, but when you start trying to fight a Terror Geist and a Zombie Dragon, it gets really nasty. The Terror Geist replenishes just on its own. You can see it's just barely getting touched to even have enough damage. And Salamander hunting packs are good, but not when something has a decent amount of armor. So they're gonna be really good against, say, a Cryptor or a, Vol a Vargulf um, or other low armor infantry, something like that, but they're not gonna be great um, against a dragon that has a little more armor. Will they do damage to it? Sure, they absolutely will, but uh, they're not gonna be great. The Ancient Salamander has more damage, but I tend to find that its fireballs are actually better against blocks of infantry. But, you know, I don't know, I'd be curious <laughs> to see what you all think about those two units. Where do you like to use them best? I think they're great units, and I used them frequently in my Krokgar campaign. Let's check this out over here. We've got Durthu dropping his Sword of Daith into these skeletal archers. They will not be long for this world. You can see Setra charging around when he's on a chariot. And this isn't even the Chariot of the Gods. He is actually very deadly. I would not underestimate Setra. When he's on the Chariot of the Gods, at the very least, he's an insane nuisance. Um, and at best, he is going to ruin your army bit by bit. I had an Empire battle once where I got attacked by Setra on his Chariot of Gods, and I had both the Hunter Snare and a Net of Amontok, and I pinned him down with both uh, successively and was pounding him with the Hammer of Witches and all kinds of, uh, what do you call it? I had... Um, Oh man, what do they call the new archers that are anti-large? I had all those guys pounding Cetra, and he came down to like a few hit points and then used Nehru's incantation to get like 40-something percent missile resistance. Somehow survived um, the initial, and once he charged in, I just couldn't stop him with all the stuff I had because my cavalry wasn't close enough. And Cetra ended up like ruining my whole army while he only had like a couple of hit points left from the initial assault. So he is a pain in the butt. Sometimes he's on a chariot. So the lizards got pretty much ro uh, rolled up here. Krokgar came back, but he's not going to be able to survive um, what's left over here. And it starts to look pretty rough for the Tomb King and um, Lizard Alliance here. They're just not able to tank out the assault. The vampires uh, came heavy on anti-large. And against um, Lizardmen, that makes a lot of sense uh, to come heavy on anti-large. It usually can work out for you. Um, the lizard men, in my opinion, aren't horrible against the uh, the vampires, but I don't feel like they're great um, because there's a lot of things you got to try and deal with as the lizards. You can bring a bunch of tomb or sorry temple guard, and it will make life a lot tougher for the vampires. We got to remember they can still bring stuff like that that has breath attacks, and then they also have uh, wind of death. So getting large and tanking them up with temple guard doesn't always work either. Um, so I feel like the lizards um, actually kind of struggle in some ways against the vampires, but that's just me. Uh, one of your options against the vampires, of course, is to just really go heavy on large units. And they could have tried that against this army, but it would have been difficult because you still got two units of blood knights, a zombie dragon, and a terror geist. Um, doesn't mean you couldn't win, especially if you had support from, say, like a... A Bastilladon with Revivification Crystal and a, a Life Slan and stuff like that to really keep the hit points of your units up, but typically the Vampires can outheal what you're going to be doing. Now, Sepulchral Stalkers are a unit that got changed in some recent patches here, too. I don't think this unit did anything, like, too crazy in this battle, but you don't want to underestimate these guys, either. They have some really nice armor-piercing damage on their missiles, and they are anti-large in melee. They're not fantastic in melee, typically, because their melee attack isn't very good and their damage is just kind of meh. Um, I, it's okay, like, for a unit their size, but from a distance, if they're able to hold that distance and unleash their missile attacks, they can cause tremendous damage to almost anything. You can see Cetra pulls away from the, uh, the Wood Elves and actually, I guess, desires to die at the hands of other undead. Maybe this is a nod to the uh, vampires and their worship of Nagash or something, I don't know. Setra come in here, and this is going to be his last stand. I think he's going to use his Nehru's incantation, but it's a leadership issue at this point. They can't hold together the leadership. So this is going to be a victory for the vampires and their um, wood elf allies. 
This was a more traditional type 2v2 with engagements kind of taking place separately on both sides. Sometimes you'll see this. I tend to prefer to deploy together with the teammate. That way we can never fall victim to the immediate flank to one side. And in fact, you may get lucky and on a wider map like this, you may catch one of your opponents in a 1v or 2v1 for longer than they want to be there. And so I typically recommend that you want to uh, deploy your troops together in a 2v2 and that you try and synergize the two armies. And in this case, it's fine, you know? You can play battles like this. I'm not saying you can't. There's just an inherent risk that comes to it. Um, risk being that maybe you end up in an unfavorable 1v1 matchup and you just end up getting wrapped up for your opponent to end up taking it. And this battle, in this particular case, both fights lasted about the same length of time, so that did not happen. Um, so it wasn't a huge deal in this battle. It's just that in this case, um, Scurvy Dog and Yumi just ended up losing their individual fights to Warlord and Francis. Um, but sometimes if you accidentally lose that fight fast or units from one side get transferred to the other, it can tilt against your teammate really quick. Whereas if you deploy together, um, you can have some pretty interesting stuff uh, to use there. Now, like say for instance, um, had these two deployed together, uh, the Wood Elves just really, the only large unit they brought was Durthu, and then they had some, some infantry. Um, I, you know, if they would have deployed together, I feel like the Sepulchral Stalkers combining with Krokgar and the Ancient Salamander and the Salamander hunting packs and stuff could have caused some significant damage. Now, of course, the um, Vampire Lord would have been trying to drop the Felbats and the Summons all over that skirmish line, and that's something that they would have had to contend with, and it would have been a pain. But from an infantry standpoint, I feel like the Tomb Kings and the um, Lizardmen had enough infantry to beat back the relatively unarmored infantry that was coming at them. Dryads and War Dancers would, of course, have been a threat. But War Dancers, having really no armor themselves, can sometimes take a lot of damage to cheaper units, albeit they'll pump out some performance. I mean, look here. All these War Dancers got a ton of kills, but, I mean, they were fighting skeletons. So um, not entirely unexpected. But at the same time, like I said, they have very little armor, and they're very vulnerable to skirmishing from stuff like these uh, skink skirmishers, chameleon skinks, um, skeletal archers. All of those things are going to have a pretty good chance of doing massive damage to war dancers before a fight even begins. But you never know how these fights will go. That's just uh, how a 2v2 is. I enjoy these battles, and I really appreciate the players here, Scurvy Dog, Yumi, Warlord, and Francis. Thank you all for being a part of the Discord and putting this battle up there. Like I said, I really wanted to show this one because it's just it was a little uh, untraditional alliance, which is always a fun way to play a 2v2. I felt like as far as a couple of small improvements that uh, people could make, and I'm not saying this to be mean, I just feel this will be fun. I'm not a perfect player either, but I noticed that the lizard player didn't bring a lore of magic. Um, so that can happen sometimes when you get to spending a whole bunch of money on uh, big units like Krokgar and the ancient salamanders and stuff like that. I mean, I feel like Wind of Magic is a necessity with any faction who has it. So basically, everywhere outside of Dwarves, um, you have to bring a Sorcerer, Shaman, Wizard, Priest, whatever the heck it is for the faction you're playing. Uh, because those Winds of Magic are kind of like a free assist for your army, and if you don't have a, a unit there to suck those Winds down and use it against your opponent, then they're just being played against you. But other than that, um, it was a fun battle and appreciate all the players. I will see you all soon with some more Total War Warhammer 2 action. If you want to come play some battles with great people, make sure you've joined the Discord. And if you want to support the channel, it really helps. If you enjoyed the video, if you leave a like, like push the thumbs up. If you disliked it, go push the thumbs down. And feel free to get in the comments and tell me what you think of the battle, how you would do things different, what type of stuff you want to see. Comments and interactions are a big deal. And I appreciate it anytime you all want to help me with that. Air of Carthage signing out for now. I will see you all soon.